How is up y'all, it's poppin' this D-Boss to this video by GameSpot Universe. This is American Horror Story, the best of Angela Bassett. Shout out to my patron, Brianna, for requesting this vid. Yeah, we're about to see Angela's best moments. I love Angela Bassett. In general, I love her, but especially on American Horror Story, like, she has the beastiest characters. Like, I always love her characters on this show. Like, she's very straight to the point, no nonsense. Ooh, what was that season? Was it, um, Coven, when she had the long braids? Yes, that was my shit. Um, but anyway, let's see her best moments of watch. Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're spotlighting one of our American Horror Story favorites, the award-winning and legendary actress, Angela Bassett. Yes. That's right, Angela has appeared in five seasons of American Horror Story. So let's start back at the very beginning. Dealing with the HBIC now. Period. Angela Bassett's first and possibly most iconic performance has to be Coven's Marie Laveau, yep, who was Coven. based off an actual real-life person. In the American Horror Story universe, though, the voodoo queen of New Orleans helped balance the supernatural powers of yes. the neighboring coven witches. They weren't complete enemies, nor complete friends. Let's call them frenemies. And Laveau's backstory is a bit complicated. She lived during the 1800s and was revered by her voodoo followers across the nation. Very soon moment. fell in love with Bastion, you one of Madame Delphine Lollery's slaves, and they got pregnant. Then she made a deal with the devil. Well, actually, Papa Legba. He offered her immortality, fitting for the ageless Angela Bassett, right? Unfortunately, Marie didn't read the fine print. In order for immortality, she needed to exchange the soul of an innocent person, not her own. So he took her newborn daughter instead. <laughs> Marie then found out that Delphine LaLaurie tortured and killed Bastion, and then turned him into a damn minotaur. Not smart, Delphine. Marie then tricks the evil Delphine into drinking a love potion, but it's not actually a love potion. She's now cursed with immortality herself. Her entire family is killed and hung in front of her house, and she's buried alive. Sealed up in your unmarked grave for all eternity, listening to the world go on around you, even until that world is no more. To get a better idea of the origins of the voodoo and witch rivalry, we fast forward to the mid 20th century. For about a decade, both sides feuded with each other. That is until Marie and the Supreme at the time, Anna Lee Layton, signed a truce. But that truce was broken when Fiona started acting up. She wanted the power of immortality herself, but Marie wasn't all that interested in helping her out. The hammer wants the nails magic. Oh, that is rich. Additionally, Marie wasn't too happy that Fiona had dug up Delphine. Fiona's daughter Cordelia also went to see Marie to help with a fertility ritual. But once again, she refused to offer any help to the coven witches. It gets worse. Fiona kills the Minotaur and sends the head back to Marie's hair salon. That's right, her cover is oh, a hair I salon. Remember that. As far as Marie is concerned, the truce is over, and she sends an army of the undead to attack the coven. We also find out that Marie's a little bit shady as well and was working with some witch hunters this entire time to wipe out the coven. But this plan backfired as Hank, one of the witch hunters and Cordelia's husband, had second thoughts. He returned to Cornrow City and killed nearly everyone. Thankfully, Queenie saved the day. And with nowhere else to turn, Marie headed to the academy to form a new alliance with the coven. Together, they would get the revenge on the rest of the witch hunters. Marie would have yet another run-in with Delphine, and thanks to some help from Spaulding, she was knocked unconscious, dismembered, and buried. The season of Coven ends with Papa Legba taking Delphine and Marie's souls, because that deal that she made with him was no longer valid. The bad news is that she died, but the good news is that she got to torture Delphine for the rest of eternity. That wasn't the last we saw of Marie Laveau. During season eight's apocalypse, Cordelia made a deal with Papa Legba to get her back. The Coven Honestly, Supreme the needed all the help she could get to defeat the Antichrist, Michael Langdon. Papa Legba agreed to free Marie's soul in exchange for the soul of Dinah Stevens. He took particular interest in Stevens because she was pure evil, one of the most corrupt and dark souls I out love there. Her Long story short, Marie returned and hacked Stevens to death with a machete. <laughs> I 
like her acting. Out with the trash. Give Papa my regards. I didn't like her she acting. She then faced off with Michael Langdon, but that didn't go so well. He ripped out her heart and took a bite of it. Luckily, Mallory reset the apocalypse timeline thanks to some time travel and reckless driving. But what did that mean for Marie Laveau? Well, for one, Cordelia never made a new deal with Papa Legba, so it makes the most sense that Marie is still dead and her soul is with him. At least she's passing time by torturing Delphine. Maybe one of the witches will go back and save her. We'll see. Bassett returned the following year for season four, Freak Show, playing the three-breasted woman Desiree Dupree, oh, and yeah. her portrayal earned her an Emmy nomination. She was one of the many performers in Elsa's Freak Show. She was also the ex-wife of Del Toledo, a.k.a. the stupendous strongman and the stepmother of Jimmy Darling, AKA Lobster Boy. In addition to the total recall look, Desiree was born with both male and female parts down below. Mm. Now, they spent a handful of years with a freak show in Chicago, but eventually they make their way down to Florida. That's largely because they're on the run because Del killed someone, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> Desiree, Del, and Jimmy also had a complex relationship. Desiree and Dell weren't doing so good in the romance department, while Jimmy had completely crossed the line with his stepmother. Desiree formed a close relationship with Jimmy's mother, Ethel, aka the bearded woman. But Ethel had her own drama to deal with, and ends up getting into it with her longtime friend Elsa. It turned out that Elsa did a lot of horrible things, including ultimately killing Ethel. Anyways, back to Desiree. She served as a kind of leader amongst the downtrodden freaks, many of which are inhumanely treated amongst society. Eventually, she learns about Stanley's murderous museum spree from Maggie after she had a change of heart. She also uncovered that Dell was responsible for killing Ma Petit, but won't let him cowardly commit suicide. After he admits to the horror, Elsa is the one that shoots him dead. Desiree's revenge tour included the manager of the museum, Lillian Hemmings, and she then gifted Lillian's decapitated head to Stanley as the perfect This is not how I thought this video was going to go. Yeah. All of the freaks join in on killing Stanley for his horrible atrocities. And then there's Maggie, who didn't get away scot-free after all, and she gets sewed in half because Chester Kreb is a horrible magician. Then the freaks buried her body and stole all her jewelry. She had it coming. By season's end, Desiree nearly became one of Dandy Mott's victims during his shooting spree at the freak show. Luckily, she survived by hiding in her trailer, and she helped to get some revenge for all the pain he caused. She joined the remaining freaks, Jimmy, Bet, and Dot, and put Dandy in Houdini's water tank. Finally, Dandy drowned as the freaks watched on. In a shocking end for American Horror Story, Desiree's story ended on a happy note. It's revealed that by the 1960s, she found love with Angus T. Jefferson. They got married and started a family together. Oh, and she was able to see Elsa perform one last time. Let's move I on to season, season five, Hotel, where Bassett oh, will no. play the evil this vampire Ramona Royale. She For a little backstory, we start in the 1970s where Ramona starred in a run of black exploitation films, including Slaughter Sister, Silky Fine, and Bride of Blackenstein. Like Over time, Ramona wanted to go beyond the genre and take on bigger Hollywood A-lister roles. And in 1977, this led her to a dinner date in the Hotel Cortez with a film producer that was cut short after Elizabeth, a.k.a. The Countess, This season was iffy on. for me. It started out really good, did. but then I started losing interest. That happens a lot with American Horror Story for me, though, yeah. honestly. They like drag it out. Now, Elizabeth, portrayed by Lady Gaga, is a 120-year-old vampire Lady Gaga who's owned in the this. Hotel Cortez for she decades. And don't worry, we'll break down her wild and fashionable backstory another day. Yes. But back to Ramona. The two would immediately fall for each other with Elizabeth turning Ramona into a vampire in the process, promising that they would be together forever. As the years went on, however, they drifted apart and eventually in 1991, Ramona would lay eyes on an up-and-coming music producer, Prophet Moses. They would fall in like, love yeah. and Ramona would turn yeah. Moses just like the Countess did to her decades earlier. This pissed off Elizabeth to no end and she would kill Moses and his entire crew, leaving Ramona distraught and heartbroken. She must have really loved you. Oh. A year oh later, God. Ramona returned to live with her parents in L.A. and take care of them in their time of need. After her mother passed from cancer, her father's mind began to deteriorate at a rapid rate. And one night after a home invasion that left Come him on, on the edge of death, 
Ramona Caramel fed him up. her blood, hoping it would cure his disease. Unfortunately, all the process had done was stop the progression, but it didn't cure it. And after 20 years, she would come home to find her dad a bloody mess after he murdered some home intruders. Mm. Realizing her father would never heal and wanting to end his suffering, oh, yeah, Ramona drowns him. him in a bathtub. And from that moment on, she sought her revenge on the Countess. This would lead her to kidnapping Elizabeth's ex, Donovan, in 2015 in an attempt to use him to access the Hotel Cortez so she can kill Elizabeth's children as revenge for killing Moses. After a few failed attempts at killing the Countess's kids with the help of Iris and Liz, Donovan tells Ramona that he's drugged Elizabeth and he'll take her back to the Cortez so she can plunge her dagger into the Countess's heart. Of course, this turned out to be a lie and Donovan would end up betraying Ramona mm -hmm. by tasing her. <laughs> The Countess and Donovan would put Ramona in a neon cage in the sealed hallway next to the Countess's ill-fated ex, Will Drake. Poor Will would unknowingly release Ramona and she would slit his throat and drink his blood while the Countess watches via cameras. From there, Ramona would go full Anakin and kill all the vampire younglings before Iris and Liz finally freed her from the sealed hallway prison. In a compromise to save their own lives, Liz and Iris sacrificed new Cortez guest Queenie, I'm so sorry Queenie, to Ramona with the helping hand of James Marsh so Ramona can get back to full strength and take out the Countess. What have you been eating? I just had me a witch. And when the two finally meet one-on-one -on -one after all the bloodshed and heartbreak, the Countess seduces Ramona one more time, and they have sex. Ramona would later participate in Ghost Will Drake's scene. fashion show, mm -hmm. and in the finale, Ramona joined the gang on Devil's Night by threatening Billy Dean Howard and telling her she would hunt her down should she ever make another live show in the Cortez on Devil's Night. Get the Roanoke. I love Roanoke. That's like my favorite season of American Horror Story. Like, straight through, it was good. From your Unlike a lot of these other American Horror Story. Uh, Finally, let's talk about Bassett's season six role in Roanoke, Monet to Massini. She was the actress who portrayed Lee Harris in the show's TV documentary series, My Roanoke Nightmare. And we'll save the actual Lee Harris and the concept for when we get to the up. amazing Adina Porter. Now, we don't know much about Monet prior to her and again, work on I don't like this Nightmare, chick's acting. other than she was a poor method actor really for the role of Lee Harris, which sadly led to her becoming a real alcoholic. Not only did she become an alcoholic, she didn't trust her cast members, nor the real Shelby and Matt story because she didn't see any supernatural phenomenon while filming the documentary. On top of this, she received a bulk of hatred from the fans of the show because the audience had suspicions about the real Lee Harris as a potential killer. This would cause Monet to blame Lee for her alcoholism rather than herself. Yeah, I love it. With all that it said, so the production team for the documentary were still able to bring Monet back for the sequel, Return to Roanoke, Three Days in Hell. And boy, oh boy, she should have never listened to Sydney. If there are any doubts in her mind about paranormal occurrences at Roanoke, they were gone when she, Audrey, and Lee encountered a spirit within the Roanoke tunnels. <laughs> One thing would lead to another and Monet and crew would be captured by the Polk family. They were tortured by the insane family as some type of retribution for what the Polks believed to be a slanderous portrayal of the family in the documentary. With the help of Audrey, the two manage to break free from the Polk's grasp and they flee back to the house to wait out the remaining hours of the Blood Moon night. Back at the house, Monet watches footage of Lee's confession to Mason's murder. Already hating her guts, Monet uses this discovery to taunt Lee when she returns to the house. Bad idea, because under the influence of the witch Scathage, Lee would throw Monet off the landing onto a broken chandelier, killing her. I just called you a murderer. Anything to say about that? Oh, I know it's hard. This one. Oh. That's it for Um uh, This is not what I expected this video to be at all. Like from the title, I'm thinking they about to be showing Angela's moments. Like her famous sayings on these episodes. You went into a summary of everything. Like, I mean, sure. It made me recall some things like, oh, okay, yeah, I remember that. I remember this, but for what? Like the fuck, what am I gonna do with this? Like, no, I wanna see her best moments, her best quotes. Like, no, this is not what I thought the video would be. I wasn't fucking with it. It was pretty boring, you know, honestly, for me. Y'all know what y'all thought though. Let me know what other videos you want me to react to and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.